Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sheena's Guide. Today, I have Shivam with me, who is a pharmacist in the G GP surgery. Uh, welcome, Shivam. Hi, Sheena. Thank uh, you for having me. Shivam, would you introduce yourself to the uh, to the to the group? Yeah, no problem. So, uh, as you said, my name is Shivam. Um, I qualified as a pharmacist in 2014 and did my pre reg year uh, in community pharmacy. Um, I then passed fully as a pharmacist in 2015 and continue to work in community ph community pharmacy, working as a a relief pharmacist, store based pharmacist. Progressed to uh, being a manager of both the store and the pharmacy. Um, I then had a little dabble into public health pharmacy, which isn't so common, um, where I worked for the local health authority um, with their needs in terms of pharmacy contracts. And then in 2020, I moved into um, GP practices in the primary care network role, and which I now do that full time uh, as a primary care network senior clinical pharmacist. So uh, do you have your prescribing also, Shivam? Yeah, actually, I, I just passed two weeks ago. So um, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, that was a lot of work just before Christmas time. Um, and it was really good to find out that result. So I'll, I'll shortly be prescribing in my own right very soon. Good. And uh, now you're working in the GP surgery. Can you tell your job role as a GP uh, pharmacist in GP surgery? What do you do? Yeah, sure. So um, I, I work in the primary care network. So this means we, we I cover six, six practices. So I, I personally don't do them all, but we can work anywhere between them. Um, and this is where we work within a multidisciplinary team, um, primarily delivering medication reviews, clinical medication reviews, um, talking with patients, managing long-term conditions, uh, working with patients in care homes, answering queries on anything medication related, um, working different programs. So for example, stopping the over-prescribing of medications, um, we just had a massive project on over-the-counter medicines, which are freely available to buy over-the-counter, but we, we prescribe them as well. Um, so to reduce the burden um, on, on, um, on the budgets, really, we, we, we've had to go through and you know, be meticulous about who, which patients are being prescribed them. Yeah. Um, we do audits on antibiotics, um, see, see what they've been prescribed for in practice and whether it is you know, irrelevant, uh, relevant to do. We work with um, repeat medication policies. So um, looking at say repeat dispensing for patients, um, what, what's appropriate for them. Uh, try and reduce health inequalities, reduce waste, promote self-care, um, provide training and support to the wider team. Uh, and as a senior clinical pharmacist, which I am, I, I support my team and provide them training uh, and support as well. Good. So thank you. I hope that gives a good feel. That's a big job role, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the list is uh, very large. Very large. But you enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. No two days are the same. Um, yeah. Although I've got medication reviews, you, you never know how they're going to go. Well, some can go very quick, very fast, you know. Um, and then some of the ones that you think is going to be very open and closed. Uh, just, just today, for example, one patient, they gave me all the symptoms of heart failure. So then it went, you know, opened another chapter of, you know, it's not just the medication review. I need to then see them holistically and yeah. um, what are the correct bloods for them and start the process there of, you know, ensuring that they've, they're going to get a recall to come back in and see the GP as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, Shivam, this majority of the public who is going to watch this uh, video are from India or from the other countries. Um, so, you know, they're not aware of our structure in UK. So if you become qualified as a pharmacist in UK, where do you become, where can you work as? Um, anywhere, really. Um... Oh, NHS? Yeah, I think the beauty of the pharmacy degree and being a pharmacist is that it's really flexible. Um, you you are you're 
a lot of pharmacists go into community pharmacy. That's so that's your your high street chemists um, and chains, um, or the local independents too. And for for a long time, this has been probably the the largest employer of pharmacists in the UK, okay. uh, and it probably still is actually. Um, but over the last few years, there's been a, a huge drive to increase the amount of pharmacists in primary care. Um, so this has been become a, a huge new option for pharmacists too. Um, hospitals recruit a lot of pharmacists um, for long-term condition clinics. Um, that you know they're seen as you know really valuable to the team, the multidisciplinary team. Um, seen to get on and be able to run things themselves after initial diagnosis so there's a lot of variability I, I still say the majority of pharmacists probably still end up in community pharmacy with, with it being still the largest employer um, but there's so many different variations uh, there's still the pharmaceutical companies manufacturing as well where you can go as a pharmacist is it easy to get a job in in pharmaceutical industry um, it's, it's not something I've ever tried, so I, I don't hand on heart know that fully, but there's, there's ways in, so a lot of hospitals um, manufacture medications for chemotherapy um, and work in the aseptic conditions, so if that's where your, your heart lies and that's where your career you want to go, you know, the, the, there's ways into that, there's, within industry too, there's such things as um, medical affairs um, personnel, uh, pharmacists have gone into there. I, I, I know of pharmacists that have become qualified persons as well, so uh, releasing batches of medications after they've been manufactured and testing that they're safe for use. Uh, so it, it, with, additional, with additional qualifications and support, you see straight away how a pharmacist can, can be so varied in the UK. It, okay. it does offer a lot of different doors. Okay. And when you've said you worked for public health. Uh, how was, can you tell me more about that? How was that? Yeah, um, it's, it's, very, it's very niche. It's a very niche area. There's, there's not a lot of public health pharmacists. Um, but it was really eye-opening about uh, a lot of local health authorities have contracts with, with pharmacies. Um, and sometimes having that ability to speak to a pharmacist and have them review contracts and how they actually work in practice, it can give, can give a lot of, you know, dividends to, to the health authority. For example, when I first started work there and commenced work, um, I started looking at a contract that they were going through and the local pharmacies were so happy with it. Um, and, and I could see why, because it, from from working in community pharmacy, I could see that you know some aspects of it weren't workable. So we, we found a solution together after giving the input and advice about what what's not right, um, and it also gives them you know real insight to day to day how how pharmacies work. At, at that point, I was working in a community pharmacy, and I could see how this contract could affect me day to day. So it was great to give them advice back and. I use it as a huge learning curve too for, for me and my, um, you know, to try and reduce health inequalities. It really did cut, drive home to me after I've seen, you know, work with data all day. Okay. The importance of, you know, really um, uh, showing these different um, policies off, such as stop smoking services and, you know, substance misuse services. Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, um, now, just going back to your pre-reg placement and your GPSC exams, um, how was your GPSC pre-reg placement and your GPSC exam? What what extra did you do, or what advice would you give it to students who are doing their GPSC exam? Um, so my pre-reg placement, um, I, I would say I have fond memories of it. it. It was, I was fresh out of uh, university, school, uh, just, just passed all my exams, knew a lot of theory, didn't, didn't know a lot of practice. Um, so it was great to marry them both together, uh, see how it works in actual, see how my knowledge actually came out. Uh, sometimes you, you could see the mismatch between patients, you know, you, you're loaded with all this information and 
um, but they have different ideas and co concepts about their own medicines. So yeah. you have to work with that. And yeah, it was re really eye opening and it was hard work. It was <laughs> <a> hard work. <laughs> yeah. Working, working, you know, I'd gone from being a student to working um, nine till five every day. It was hard work. Um, studying alongside work too is, is much harder than having all day to, to study. Um, yeah. that, that was one of the things I had to learn quickly that I needed to keep on top of my work and keep reviewing things. Um, the GPHC exam itself, um, it, you know, I, I look retrospectively now that I've passed and it, it was fine for me, but it, I won't lie, you know, that you, you do have to do a lot of work for it. Um, just make sure you keep on top and, you know, know your things and yeah you'll go from then you'll be fine yeah don't leave it to the last yeah i don't 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 leave it to the last minute yeah. there's no point cramming everything in you keep going step by step uh, the bnf was a great resource for me um took a chapter every every month or so just read it through read round it um made sure that my knowledge was sufficient you know married that with input uh, practice work um and, and that seemed to work well for me but everyone has their own oh, ways of working doing it okay right. yeah. um i don't know what else to ask you is there anything else you want to give it to the group um just good firstly good luck if, if you're going to come down this route good luck um you know i wish you all the best and the vacancies um, are a lot isn't it pharmacy job vacancies are a lot isn't it yeah at the minute it, it's um a really good it's really good at the minute for pharmacists um for job roles there's there's lots of lots of opportunities at the minute but like i said it's uh, when i when i first qualified it was predominantly um hospital and community this this primary care um was really about you know five years ago um but now it's it's you know rocketing off and there is a lot of opportunity the saying that you know the world is your oyster is actually at the minute true absolutely as i say to our students who are doing their ospaps and pharmacy i always say that you know the, the world is there for you you have to grab it nobody will show you this is the way the more initiative you do it that's the way it's going to be yeah, and yeah coming to you. the primary care as i said to like even i'm i'm new to this primary care you know after i came to now we can't think about uh, gp surgery without a pharmacist because now we feel like the whole mdd team has to be there even if we do a um you know um uh, what is that a meet a nursing home round ward round we always have uh, our pharmacist with us because that's a polypharmacy is one of the thing where we needed the pharmacy because we yeah. everything we don't know so that that empty you know all the team comes together that gives a big hand yeah and and that word um polypharmacy and the word de-prescribing as well has become huge in the last, you know, couple of years. We, we've learned that by adding medicines and more medicines, we're creating more problems. So we need to start thinking not just of adding things, but taking away. So that is a big part of my role absolutely, currently is, absolutely. is that, that de-prescribing role. Thank, thank you very much, Shivam. Thank you for coming. Hope our group yeah. will enjoy. These other students who have just qualified in India or other part of the world who are just coming, not only for them, but also for students who have done pharmacy here. I think if people like you would be giving, a, you know, the talk from you would give them brighten their future also. We'll show them a bit more pathway. Thank you very much for coming and giving a chat with us. No problem. Thank you. Good luck, Bye. everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye.